Sorry. <laughs> to get yeah, everyone to guess how it works, you know? What? I was, what? I was trying to figure out how it works to like invite you because I tried to get on live and I feel like we, we're both on live. Oh, today, right? yeah, yeah. You can't just merge things. You need to, someone has to start it and then, uh, yeah, yeah. but yeah. So um, I, was, I was talking about you. I was saying great things about you. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, I'm just saying hi to everyone who's been joining. Um, thank you for joining, of course. And uh, just recapping that we'll be posting the, the, the full video later um, tomorrow or in the next few days as well. Uh, hopefully the people from the team, hopefully Lauren is uh, taping uh, recording right now because it's always a hassle to download the thing you can't really download um, <clears throat> and if anyone has questions yes. we can do I, a little say that again no I see, it seems like you we've lost it with uh, Ruby you know you uh, are oh oh yeah 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 that yeah it's because of me actually because I thought it was recording because I was using that um, an app <clears throat> but it actually only records the the image on the screen <clears throat> yeah but yeah. um yeah so it's it's but but she's i mean the the, the ones that the the team people download they're, they're fine so yeah so cool. so you're in zurich yeah i'm there i'm there it's been and nice. you've been yeah, tattooing I, I feel like i'm from zurich now you know i feel like i feel like i'm from here now like, and all of the confinement I mean, over there yeah, man, it's been super good. We, we came back to work on Monday, so now it's been like three days already, and it's been really good. Like, the, I mean, you, you're sweet, so you know what's what people will like, how to take care of like things like here, you know. Um, but yeah, I've luckily I've been stuck here, you know, like luckily I've like could my flight was canceled and I could stay here, which is like, which is at the beginning was like, oh, it's a nightmare, but then it became it became a blessing, you know, like, is I mean. Yeah, now nah, nah, it's like, I mean, it's been, the summer has been already starting a month ago. Uh, the situation has been handled super, super well here. And then, yeah, we're back at work already. So, you know, even <laughs> if we, even if we wear masks and everything, like it's, I was in the shop yesterday and I was looking around and I was like, it seems like nothing happened. Yeah. yeah. It seems like nothing. I was like, watching Matt, watching Giorgio, Jordan. I was like lloyd around it was like it was it seems like nothing ever happened you know totally. the only difference that was in the shops that everyone's wearing mask that was only yeah, yeah, yeah. but you felt you felt so soon you felt so soon in zurich that we were able able to work that it felt like nothing happened because because i flew i flew here i think from the wrong, wrong it's like the 9th of march so right i guessed it i guessed here for two weeks you know and then the third week that I was putting appointments just in case because I was like, oh, I might stay here, whatever, because of the situation, you know? Then they, they, I put appointments and I booked people and then the situation happened and uh, we had to like lock down everything. And that that time I was like, all right, cool. Then, you know, like, I think I'm, I might be stuck there. Then my, my flight got canceled. And I was right. like, oh. Yeah, it got cancelled. So first, the thing is, like, because my girlfriend was like, when they bring everyone in Switzerland, they were like, oh, it's Swiss, Air, Swiss Airways, whatever Swiss company that you fight with, you know, they're going to handle super well, you know. But they sent me a message the day before my flight that it was cancelled. And I couldn't even see it, but then it was cancelled. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. But then I was like, oh, I need I need to survive. How am I going to do with money? So my worries my Rory came like, big shit, I'm going to have to find i'm gonna have to find uh, a way to to survive you know what i mean to survive to get money to pay my rent in london in a way you know? yeah yeah and uh i did this post you probably saw i did this post saying like hey i'm still taking appointments for the future day don't worry mm -hmm. about it um you know sometimes it's gonna reopen so we're gonna obviously we're gonna tattoo each like i'm gonna tattoo you at some point and then people the 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 feedback out of it was the feedback out of it was incredible like it, people were really understandable uh they sent me so many like really good texts some people booked in no even a question some people in america wanted to pay for the future tattoo when i just announced yeah yeah, yeah. i just i just announced yeah people have been so supportive i have to say like i don't know I, I can't i can't stress enough how 
how appreciative uh, I, you know I am, and and I think everyone is of the you know the oh. support uh, that 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 clients and have have been have been giving to the artists and the studios, and really has been been really amazing. I mean, I, I you know I, I thought I don't know I didn't expect people to yeah be that supportive. Like I thought yeah yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I felt like, yeah, like everyone's kind of dealing with a, a crazy situation. Um, yeah, like, but people right. to come, to go out of their way and say like, look, yeah, like I, I got the same, I think, you know, and, and in Zurich, we, we, we got so many um, just appointment requests and yeah. I mean, just generally it's been, it's been really good that way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's really surprising like to see the, the good thing that that I feel like I can talk about is the the way I travel so much at the moment, you know, between countries and and cities, and I could see from all my customers, loyal or not, you know, I could see in which part of the world people were really willing to to really support the artists, you know, and then like I can't I can't lie, but America has been they've been like almost too much, you know, almost like I feel bad, you know, like. I mean, I don't feel bad, but I feel like super grateful because like, first of all, I wasn't announcing only for London and Zurich that I was like taking appointments for, but people in America were willing to pay full tattoo. They were willing to send me $800. Thanks for the best customer that I had, like for real. But they were like, yeah, I'm going to send you that money because, you know, next time you come, uh, even if I came a few times in the last uh, couple of years, like they were willing to send me money, you know? And, yeah, yeah. and most of them, like, were in the same situation, I mean, same situation that we are, you know? So I just felt like, wow, this is insane. So I felt like it's been really insane between, between, like, everyone having, like, difficulties, but still people really trying to support the artists, which is well not expected. I expected, like, this situation to be hard for everyone or, like, you know, but I feel like if you have something... If you have a product or anything to give to customers or to give to like clients or friends, like they would be willing to really help you, you know. And compared to Europe, the thing that I feel like in America is way more uh, shown is tips, you know. They tip each other to to help each other, you know. And they're really, really willing to tip. They're really willing to to help the artists because they really appreciate the work that they they've been given. And then now okay. that we all stopped in Europe, like people in America are still willing to fucking pay me for, for like a future appointment, which is like probably in six months, which is fucking really appreciable, you know? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, so I guess, I guess that there has to be, yeah, I think, I think we, we all kind of, you know, the situation in, in England is, is kind of, um, kind of, uh, kind of yeah weird and and very um you know there's very little information or whatever i have to say it's quite yeah. um <clears throat> yeah it kind of makes you um like you know quite envious of you guys who get to work um I, bro like as as i can say like i've like i don't even know how this is possible for me because i've been like I came to the worst situation being like stuck in the country to I'm the first one posting tattoos at the moment, yeah. which is like, you know, which is like for me, like, well, I'm posting, I'm like, I'm posting a new tattoo. Like, hey, this is what's happening in my new work. And people are booking now. So like my life is, for me, my life is back on track, you know, yeah. which, is, yeah. which is like so like lovely. It's so like appreciable. And I know that the situation that all my friends are, which is in England, France, America, I can see everyone having no clue of when's the next time they're going to work. Yeah, and it, it, it's yeah, it's crazy. Oh, so do you have a I have a question for you? Do you know for everyone that's watching? Do you know pretty much when? I don't know. I mean, not when, but what's the the last the latest news in 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 England at the moment about the about the virus and about the situation? With nah. the yeah, I mean, you know, I stay, I stay, I stay on it, obviously, um, and um, and but it's so difficult to find any any tangible information. I mean, what what they, I mean, they have there's announcements every day, um, sort of the the 
the the I don't know if it's a minister or whatever, like a person talks about, I mean, there, there's sort of uh, official announcements every day. Um, there isn't any, I mean, this morning, again, they insisted that there wouldn't be any uh, loosening up of the measures until, uh, until a certain amount of criteria are met. Yeah, and the criteria are. I mean, part of it, uh, the, the 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 most crucial one is that the the cases and the deaths, especially, uh, decrease. And currently, we're not. They're not decreasing now. Um, currently, there is the lowest increase. Um, so the 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 speed at which it, it increases has been, you know, it's. it's it has been slowing down, but it's still increasing, if I understand correctly. So that means we might be hitting yeah. progressively peaking, but it still means that we might be weeks uh, weeks uh, until it actually starts decreasing. It, and to be honest, yeah. it's like almost impossible to get real information. So it's, to be honest, yeah. just like stay in Switzerland and uh, enjoy for all of us. That's That's, that's what you can do now. There's no doubt, like, I mean, it's been, I, I felt this whole time for me, like, because I'm really trying to focus into, which is a good time for me, because I, try, I, I was trying at the moment, because my career in tattooing got really better, and I'm always been like someone working really hard, and I'm trying to find a way to get, you know, a good life, or something that I can really enjoy, mm -hmm. and work with something that I love, and then it, I've been trying to get, like, some income i've been trying to get some income out of out of work you know trying to invest to get some money coming into account without working physically you know i was trying to find a way to to not be in a situation to not be in a situation that many people have like you know and then i've been traveling for that reason i've been traveling trying to to not get too much on instagram and trying to spread my name, spread my work, and trying to learn from every country or every places. And um, I started this brand, like Saint Patrick, you know, I don't know, probably saw it. I started as a collective, and then and then bit by bit, we were like, okay. Sorry, what, what is that? Let's do it. As, I feel like the connection is lagging a bit, isn't it? Is your connection yeah, lagging? Yeah, there's something odd, but... Um... Yeah, I think I think uh, I don't know about about yeah. Zurich, but in England, like everyone's um, constantly uh, streaming, you know, being home and, and streaming. So I think it's just uh, I think it, uh, um, yeah, Maybe. the connection, the bandwidth is really bad, yeah. especially especially around that time of the day. I try to get on four G. If it's me, yeah. I try to get on four G, and it doesn't seem to help. I can try again. I'm on Wi Fi. I've been. You know, yeah, let, let, time, let's so. try. Sorry, let's let's try 4G. Let's see if it's better. Yeah. Um, hey, I just wanted to, um, you know, for, also for the sake of uh, of uh, uh, kind of keeping a bit of a structure and a flow in the conversation, um, I wanted to see uh, if if we sort of. I mean, I thought. Well, okay, so let's finish with what you were saying because I thought I think that's very interesting. I think that. The question of how people have been coping uh, also professionally and, and financially with the current situation. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, tattoo artists are not notorious necessarily for being extremely business savvy. And, you know, a lot of people just work with their hands and, you know, work. You have your hands or you have a person who comes to, to get work from you. If you don't, if you're not able to work, you're not uh, earning any money. Um, and, you know, I thought it's been really interesting to see the amount of great art that's been produced. Um, obviously, you know, I can see, you know, from, from my own feed, but like on, on the platform like Tattooism, you know, I, I can see like people have just switched to producing art. And that's really, that's really great. I've been wondering how well it worked. Personally, I felt I have done a few things. I've sold uh, a few uh, drawings and things, yeah. probably not enough to 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 really make up for um for for, for the money I'm not earning. So I have to yeah. say that 
I have been counting a bit more personally, uh, like, you know, on, this, on, on that sort of thing that you were talking about earlier about, you know, just saying like, look, you can book with me, you can start already book a, a, a new appointment and then, you know, people being understanding. I have to say, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure some people have sold, uh, managed to sell a lot of uh, art and things, but at the end of the day, even if you sell prints, you need to sell a lot of prints. So don't you feel like you've been selling a little bit more merch than in general? Oh yeah, right? oh yeah, I've, definitely. I've like but people are really willing to to spend money online because because at the end, that even if it's like party people, even people that are like you know work in bars, people are actually not able to work right now. You know, because yeah. at the end of the day, I realized that freelancers that there's a, there's a big group of freelancers, but most of them can work from home. So most of them being getting money but not being able to enjoy the, 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 the everyday life, you know? And I feel like online, people really buy a lot of merch, you know? People buy a lot of merch. Uh, I talk to my friends that own companies of coffee, for example, like Dark House Coffee, and those guys been selling so much more coffee privately, you know, instead of selling to, to saying, like they're doing wall sale, instead of selling to cafes, you know? They've been, yeah, selling, yeah. they've been selling a little bit more, a little bit less amount of coffee privately, Right, because people can't go to cof cafes instead of like selling to big, and he's those those people make more money now because it's less amount for more money, you know. And I feel like totally. a lot of people, like I feel like Soto as well, is doing really well at the moment with 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 a merch, and then yeah, I was wondering if you because I as I did like, as I said, I started this brand San Patrino, and and then we've been selling like crazy amount, and I talked to the guy that's doing it, the screen printer, because because I'm in Switzerland, I don't take care of any stock, I don't take care of any um, actual product so like mm -hmm. I don't design stuff for for the brand and then he's screen printing and selling everything out you know mm -hmm. but he's been really surprised and uh, surprised and 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 happily uh like i mean happily surprised he's been happy by the amount of things we've been selling as the first yeah. batch you know and i feeling i feel like this 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 crisis is a, it's really about why have you been doing to survive? Have, have you been working every day to to be happy with what you got? Or did you think about a future self trying to get, you know, some money out of your skills or whatever you can do? Like because yeah. I've seen some people doing prints and doing arts, which I didn't focus on. I didn't even if I was doing some paintings and stuff or drawings, I did focus on what I could draw, which is way easier than what I tattoo. Mm -hmm. to put on shirts, fula, bandanas, you know, and then these things been selling really well. So like, you know, like in this live, I really want to talk about this, the situation that people should realize how to, to adapt themselves as freelancers yeah. or anyone. But, but to, I just, I just need to interrupt. Do you hear? I just need to interrupt because I need to, to, to mediate something that's going on in the, in the comments. And uh, Colin, who is claiming to have won the competition, and it needs to be publicly said that he did not, and that very clearly Mouse did. From I told you which, I told you, which is I told you which is fucked up because he just like he didn't even play the thing. He just like just shut the game down, just like just <laughs> first video like after this <laughs> and <laughs> and then it so it needs to be on record that definitely colin did not win um and uh really? and yeah like just just Doesn't mouse win. just crushed it um mm. but Can everyone everyone <laughs> he's smashing it he's smashing it he's, he's using the same guy so basically he's using if you guys are watching it he's using cure toujours go on his instagram he's the guy that prints all the stuff you know and he's amazing and this guy basically his job is to to help artists in this in this crisis, or to help himself as well, because he's got his company of screen printing. But at a time that every artist can't work, but every artist make art. So why would you not make art into a, a product that people would buy? Because they can't get tattooed by you, of course, but they could get your flash or any of your work into a product they could buy and get shipped because it's all working anyway. So like. Mouse, I'm super proud. This this kid is a fucking is a genius. You know, like I Dale, do you know I'm I'm talking about the push up thing. Oh, <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I, 
Five sets of push ups. I want to see Miles doing push ups. He did 20. Did he? he just like, he posted I mean, one video that was very well curated and yeah. just he said, I don't know, like 20, 21, whatever, like when we were like, oh, let's do one more day. <laughs> and then, you know, then it was, it was that really. And yeah, then yeah. Colin is in the comments and like, oh, I win. I'm like, no, you fucking d didn't. You won anyway, nothing. <laughs> but um, he won nothing. Couldn't, yeah, couldn't did push ups like he won nothing. He tried taking the privilege of a cigarette because all you you have a cigarette in your mouth. Like, what are you trying to show the people? Like, it doesn't work, bro. Like, I love I love that you could not do the one one hand push up. Did you see the papillon? Did you see the pap Daniel? Oh was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty. He was pretty doing good. like he was like too easy. He was doing one hand push ups like, and then he switched with the other hand. I was like, like this. That is crazy. This motherfucker is super good. He's like, I mean, Daniel, I've, I've been talking to him for about like, I don't know, a year online, you know, and and I was meant to go on, on a tour in America with, with uh, Joe, you know, 21, 29, 7. And um, Joe one day came in, he was like, oh, ah, yeah, this guy, Le Papillon, I don't know if you know this, this guy, but you want to go on tour with us. And I was like, what, you mean Le Pap, like Le Papillon? Like, for me, it's been like an inspiration the whole time. Like, I've been you know, I've been, as you know, my career so far has been really short and then I've been trying to improve my style and I got a lot of inspiring artists. So like Le Pape, Le Papillon was definitely someone I was looking up to, you know, and then when he wanted to go on tour with her, I was like, this is really interesting. And going on tour with him, I realized he's a legend. Like he's got so many things, he's got so many things that's interesting than me. There's like 25, 26. So it's like, I mean, I'm 28, which is not that old, but looking up to someone that's younger than you and you think he's way older it's like crazy and then now that i'm doing these kind of push-up stuff and then the guy can do it even better and i'm like he's like he's a dude like he's really yeah he's i also dude. want to be and, on the on record i just want yeah. to be on record <laughs> saying <laughs> that <laughs> you guys you guys <laughs> weigh you guys weigh half of my weight and i think there's something a bit unfair <laughs> as well there so I can still, I can probably do it like up to 20, 20 like, <laughs> anyway, um, but um, hey, let's, uh, I, I just wanted to, um, I mean, it, it, it's cool to go with the flow as well, but like, I wanted to, um, I just wanted to touch on one thing that I, that I always thought was very interesting in, in your, like, sort of tying in a bit with the, the not really the, the question of like, you know, the sort of uh, alternative businesses and stuff like that, because I think that'd be a great conversation to have. But like, <clears throat> yeah. but it's, um, but I wanted to, I think one thing that is very sort of interesting and compelling and really like inspiring as far mm. as your world and your career is concerned is is your, you know, you've been curating the, the French prison tattoos uh, thing and you have, you know, you, you've always kept like a thing, you know, uh, a, you know, of of these sort of like folk, you know, an interest for like, you know, without without uh, getting what's the word, without getting, uh, without fetishizing too much the whole like, oh, ignorant or you know, folk or whatever. Like sometimes I f I feel that. You know, it's easy to 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 get into, like, yeah, kind of fetishizing and being too obsessed or being like caught up in a sort of nostalgic thing, which is not what what you yeah. do. But you're also really serious about um, all of yeah, all the, that that those historical, you know, references. I mean, and I, yeah. yeah so how? So so anyway, I just wanted to to ask you how. So how did you get into tattooing in the first place what part of your work of your sort of creative artistic world is that side the french prison tattoos the french heritage because obviously you're french uh and yeah. and which is which is a little bit known especially in the french speaking world but but not as known as obviously the the russian or american of course kind of That's folk important. tattoos because in my opinion like i mean my opinion Everyone, everyone's focused a lot because it's been more meditized, med mediatized, mediatized, mm -hmm. mediatized, written because there's books about it, and it was a lot 
there's a lot about it, you know? Uh, and when I started getting tattooed, first of all, like in France, like when I was actually 17, like I was meant to be tattooed when I was 18, because my mom was like, you got to be 18 to get tattooed. But because I was in, in skateboarding industry and then everyone like tattooed from home and, you know, like there's this guy called Manny Shen that's like, like running the, the Supreme shop in, in Paris, you know? But he's actually from Bordeaux and, and this guy was like fucking cool as fuck, you know, like he was looking nice and I was like 16 and I just wanted, I just wanted a tattoo because he had a few at the time and, and I felt like I want, because he was one of his, I mean, I haven't seen him in probably 10, 14 years, you know, but at the time he was my friend and, and um, I definitely wanted like, you know, something that, I, I definitely wanted a tattoo. And uh, he hooked me up with one of his friends that was tattooing at home, but she was like, she's still really good now, you know, like, um, I mean, not like on Instagram, whatever, like, you know, French people, whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, so when I was about to get 18, like she did my first tattoo, which was like a big ass cross, I can show people, big ass cross on my, on my chest, on my, on, my, on my torso, you know? And um, yeah, that, that, that was my first tattoo, you know? And then she did it and then I had to lie to my mom and I had to show her two weeks after that was my 18, but it was already healed, but she didn't know about tattooing. So I was like, yeah, cool, whatever. Um, in this in this area of me, in this era of me getting tattooed, and I realized all the pressures I got in my body were not ignorant, like now the trend has been the last few years, but like I've been tattooed now, I'm 28, I've been tattooed since I'm 17, so it's like, you know, like, yeah, probably like, 10 years and not less, and what the fuck, I can't do math. What is it, like 17 to, yes, 11 years, exactly. Um, um, I've, I've had taste of, of, first of all, religious stuff, because all my tattoos are kind of religious, you know, and, and I really like this, this classic looking like tattoos. And I've never seen books before, and I've never, never seen like actually what's a traditional old tattoo. And I like this kind of, like, the idea of having a tattoo that looks good from far. Not meanings, but something that's meaningful for me. So I didn't need something that looks or that's meaningful. I didn't need I didn't need my mom to approve the meaning or anyone because I'm not from jail. I don't have this this rest of things that are like political pushing tattoos that are really uh, political, really uh, that have a big meaning. Like I felt like my tattoos I I just need them to be aesthetic, you know? I need mm -hmm. them to be to look good, and then I feel like more and more I was getting tattooed. Then I was in the skateboard industry, and then I feel like my tattoos needed to just mean something for me. And then mm -hmm. start tattooing, you know, way later. Um, and I met Rossell and 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 Steve Steve Donuwe that that worked now for 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 Sombre, and they introduced me to this French prison book, you know. And then I was looking at the guys, and I was like, that's me. That's all of me. But like when I was doing this, this, this six months apprenticeship, you know, um, that was not long at all, but that teach me a lot of things. I was starting from home and, and, and I was trying really to get good at tattooing in a way. I was, I was really into it because I was tattooed, before I was looking, before I was tattooing, I was really covered with tattoos already. So I was looking to get really into the industry. And I met Simon Earl that you probably, probably heard, I mean, I'm sure you have Simon L. And um, he was a friend of this guy that does coffee, Dark Arts, you know, and he was, he agreed to help me to get into tattooing. But the first thing he told me, he was like, delete all your Instagram. And I was like, bro, okay. <laughs> I literally kind of like, that's, that's my life. Like, like, I just made, you know, like my work from Instagram. Like I get my customers. Like, he was like, yeah, but if you want to get into tattooing and if you want an apprenticeship, which is the right way to do, then they don't want you, they don't want to know that you're tattooing from home. Like, that would be the, the, the blasphemer, you know? Like, so I was like, oh, I really, I really trust Simon L. I was like, you, the dude, which at the time I didn't even know how big it was, that now I know how big he is, can make it, you know? But like, at the time, I was like, yeah, cool, I'm going to listen to him anyway because he's an elder. And then I was like, I'm going to listen to him. So then I deleted all my stuff from, from Instagram and I really looked. I really tried to be, you know, like doing drawings because I was not even drawing before that started tattooing. So I've never drawn before. And then tattooing actually pushed me into actually be 
be good at drawing because I was not even drawing. All I was doing is bought a tattoo kit online and mm -hmm. trying to tattoo my, tattoo my friends. Then from that, my friends were asking me, hey, can you do, can you do a rod? Can you just rod on me? Mm -hmm. like, no, I can't, bro. Like, I don't know how to draw. I can to draw. To draw. And then because of Simon, and then I started drawing and do a portfolio, you know? And, yeah, yeah. Video, and then from then, I was really serious. And for six months, I really focused into to doing a portfolio, you know? And from then, I got the apprenticeship <laughs> of Vagabond Tattoo Studio uh, in Hackney Road on, on London. And be back there, I was still in the industry with people like, like you know, like, like Russell and, and, and Steve and everything. And then they showed me this book of, you know, old French prison guys. But at the time, I was still looking for a style. I was looking for a style. The, beginning, the thing of it is I never tried at the beginning to get a style on my work. I was trying to, to just draw and learn how to draw. And I was trying to, to really focus into, into getting to tattooing and trying to do everything, you know, every style. I was trying to, to do like traditional, old, like old school, whatever, like any, any style. And then when Steve and, and Ross showed me this book, I felt like I found myself there because I was French, first of all, so I had a culture uh, connection with these with this, with this books and with these uh, tattoos. And second of, uh, of all, um, nothing, I couldn't find nothing about it, you know? Yeah. Then on a Christmas day, I was bored, like, you know, on Christmas, like, your family is fine and stuff. Then I, I got this book that I bought by my, for myself. And I just I started this page like French prison tattoo for the sake of it because on Instagram there's nothing there was nothing about French prison tattoos and I just felt like hey I'm going to share to the world but it was not serious it was just like did you did you ever connect who is it is it uh, Michael de Poissy or who who did I the tried to connect him so after I started this page like preem preem tattoo mm -hmm. you know um, message me to stay in my house. To, to come to London and, and do some tattoos. And I was like, bro, I don't even know you. Like, I'm talking to you on Instagram. You, come to, you want to come to my house? It's crazy. I ended up to be my best friend and business partner now, you know, uh, because he's an amazing person. But yeah, we, we, he definitely helped me because he knew the culture because he's French and, and he's, yeah, yeah. for me. But for he me, did those books, didn't he? For me, he's a pillar of French prison tattoos because he's doing so well. It looks like he's real, you know? Even if yeah, he yeah. looks like he's real. And he, of course, he knew about Michael de Poissy. And then a bit after that, actually, Michael de Poissy started in this page, French Tattoo Museum, which mm. is kind of funny because he started just after I did the page. I mean, just after six months or like way after that, I did the page, that you helped us actually to, 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 to promote. You know, like once you realize that French Tattoo was cool, you're like, oh, you messaged me. It was really nice, you know, and um, that definitely helped. You know, Tattoo Museum definitely helped to push up these pegs and uh, Michael de Poissy is n not even one, he is the biggest collectioner of, of French heritage of tattooing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So he is definitely, and I talked to him and he's been doing that for 25 years, which at the time I was 26. So he's been collecting before, almost like when I was born. So like Michael de Poissy is definitely one of the one of the yeah one of the, the greatest collection of all the, for this French heritage of tattooing, yeah and um, and yeah if you guys are watching that like go watch he's just starting I don't know if you saw he's starting starting this um his YouTube videos about uh, I don't know if you saw did you see that no didn't he started he's studying like two days ago like videos about uh, history of tattooing on YouTube and, okay um, yeah we tried to contact him and my plan with Priem was to go to Paris and interview him and you know talk about because at the end i'm just a guy that got that got references because i live in london i'm not in france i got references from from online and books which are really rare so i was trying to get more and people don't really know about it um so that's a that's a good plan that we have for french present is to is to interview uh michael de poissy but he's been pretty is starting doing that online so <laughs> i was gonna you have to know do. um you know since you're in switzerland in Lausanne, there's a place uh, called um, uh, Musée de l'Art Brut or Fondation d'Art Brut, uh, Musée de l'Art Brut. What? And they have a uh, collection of chunk, uh, chunks of skin 
their mm. words were preserved and that yeah. they have tattoos on them. Yeah. You should, you should try to call them up and see if you could go visit the archives because you should be able, I think you're, you're and, and that, that is something, I've seen them, I have some photos. Yeah. But it'd be amazing to get real, uh, a really good documentation of it uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's mostly like, it's, it's mostly from soldiers I think yeah. maybe 19th or 18th century. I'm not quite sure, but um, it, it, and it's really it's quite beautiful. I have to say. Yeah, I've I've seen some pictures because it's been it's been documented a lot. Which is the thing with French prison things. It's like it's so rare. Which is for me became straight a click in my brain in my head. It was like how. How is it possible that the this massive heritage of tattooing in France has never been, you know, as a, not as a trend, but kind of, you know, like never yeah. been such documented, you know? But some people know about it. So, yeah. like, I, I wish, like, I've, I've seen, I've asked people to go to museums. Like, there's one in London, there's one in Lausanne, as you said. Um, there's one in Poland as well, actually. Interesting. Which is, like, kind of the same, you know? Um, and I've got people that, that went there and took pictures for me. And there's a, there's a new exhibition that happened in Leon or Toulouse, if I'm not wrong, like last year. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I asked people to take pictures for me. But the thing is, this is only pictures, you know? Yeah. And there's so many pictures you can post about. But the good things as Russian prison tattoos is about the meaning. Because French tattoos have meanings, but they're way for me. For me, man, in my opinion, they're way more public. They're way more interesting because it's it's comic, it's erotic, it's 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 yeah. personal. It's not just politic and so crude like 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 um, Russians. You know, I think French tattoos are really have a meaning that still people ask me on 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 the Instagram page like, hey, what does this mean? I'm like. What does what does a sun mean? A sun a sun is it's a new day. It's the other day. It's it's reborn. It's like it's logic. Like French prison tattoos have it's ignorant tattoos. They, yeah, they, but it's, they it's much more. And, and and you know what? There's something that I find quite interesting as well. I mean, obviously, well, I can't say for the for the Russian ones because mm -hmm. I don't read Russian, but um, I have to say that in terms of the in terms of like the history of of anglo-saxon um tattoos um the the french historical tattoos have a much a much uh much more presence of language phrases poems things like that in a way that is as you said like funny very evocative very you know sometimes quite heavy but like but there's there's a lot of word plays and things there's much more involvement of language which i find quite interesting and you know what i actually always thought that that's one thing that for example the first you, I, i've known fuzi since you know like for, for for very long now like for you know over 10 years like way before you know when he was just started tattooing we did um, we did a, uh, I think for, for issue three of Saint Bleu. Uh, I mean, he, he had already been tattooing a bit, but, um, anyway, and I always thought that, that his, his use of language was very interesting. There was always some, something, you know, funny or really kind of spot on in, in, in the text that he would put in the, in, in his tattoos as well. And I always thought that was something that yeah. probably wouldn't even work yeah. in english i mean it's it's very it's really something that is very specific to to french culture and uh and this that's is something that obviously i feel i feel, feel very uh, very sort of you know i connect with uh, a lot obviously connect yeah the thing with french blue tattoo is like you can translate that super easily to any languages mm -hmm. because it's not political first of all like russian ones you know they're not they're not like connected to any uh whatever like um leaders of russian leaders that back in the days or any war leaders whatever the french ones are meaning as meaningful in a way that people can still feel it now you know mm -hmm. it's like uh, you know like a, a swallow with a letter in the, in the mouth in a big 
was just like a letter from your lover. It's just like something so easy or like, you know, like someone that's waiting to come back from home. Something that's still, still ignorant in a way that's like possible now to, to, to retranslate, you know. Which, which, this is why I think the, the French prison tattoo, when I said the page, got a big, big, big uh, inflation on what people do now because it just shows some people that they don't know about tattooing and start making feel, making them feel like they could do it. And it's mm -hmm. not about meaning, but it's because the, the picture, the picture means, means what they see. Yeah. The picture yeah. means what they see, you know? Yeah. And I feel like it's way more, it's what people want to know. Like people always want to know what the tattoo means, what the tattoo, no, nah, no. Nah. You know, and I feel like this French prison tattoo means what you see. Yeah. You know? And it talks yeah. to people way better, you know, way better. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, except for the, uh, except for the word plays that are very specific to French language. But I, I agree. And I think in, in some ways, do you know, it's really interesting as well. I remember talking with uh, Tata actually about um, whether when he started tattooing in the 80s, there was any presence of awareness of the, that kind of heritage. And uh, I, I can't, I'm not going to try and quote him because I, I don't remember clearly enough. But if I'm not mistaken, what he was saying is that at the time, it, it was a kind of, it was a revival in the sense that they, they were getting tattoos like from American culture, but there was no awareness or like near, like a lot of the things we're talking about actually were 19th or early 20th century and they did they, yeah. they did disappear at some point it was not a continuous uh, tradition Com in the way and this is where there's something also quite different in america and in russia because in both cases it's a continuous history and uh, uh yeah like historical tattoos have continued and been you know passed down and 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 been adapted but mm. but there, there wasn't there wasn't an actual sort of jump there wasn't a a, a void in gap. the middle whereas exactly a gap and whereas yeah. in um, in uh, in france there definitely was that that kind of gap and but but it's interesting because i feel that um uh, maybe for this reason as well and with today like what you described about your you know your desire to to find something also that you could connect with um i think that i think that in many ways and i identify with that not not as a french person but as a swiss person in the sense that i grew up around american influenced or anglo-saxon tattoos and i yeah. had a fascination for tattoos but i didn't culturally identify with those and yeah. I looked for, which is the reason why I started doing engravings and looking for, mm. you know, uh, abstracts, like more, you know, things that were related to graphic design or things that, yeah. that, that just belong to the culture that I grew up in. And, yeah. uh, uh, and I think that it's a really interesting time in the evolution of tattoo culture, generally speaking, because I feel that there's enough maturity now in each place. I mean, tattooing has been uh, present worldwide for long enough, and it's it's and it's been uh, and and there's a critical mass in many countries that um, allow. Even in China, I think yeah. it's so interesting. Like, as you can see, in China, artists who work who are working really hard to connect. Ta the tattoos they do with uh, Chinese, you know, Chinese arts and Chinese painting and stuff like that. And, and Chinese is obviously very different from Japanese. You know, it's, it's like there are yeah. some influences. Or if you, see, oh. if you see the Koreans who do amazing sort of neo-traditional Japanese. They do everything. Um, they do everything. Koreans do everything. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they sure. inject Korean elements in there and this yeah. is something that i find particularly interesting as i feel we've been going through you know maybe 20 years now especially with internet 20 years of of that sort of instant 
you know, it seems that everything's globalized, cultural uh, culture is globalized immediately uh, mm. and, and is going to be completely flattened. And actually, I feel that be, now that has passed the, the, that excitement of having access to everything, people need to reconnect to the reality of their lives, of their, their, their own context. And exactly. what is relevant, not online on their Instagram page where there's all nationalities, but exactly. as a tattoo that you have, you go out on the street and there's the people who are just like local people, the people you hang out with, whatever, you share something that is local yeah. and you need, and, and, the tattoo, and the tattoo industry, the tattoo community, the tattoo culture is sort of working at articulating those two things the fact that it is a globalized culture but also there needs to be relevant to individuals uh yeah. you know that that don't you know that are not tattoo geeks that are just you yeah, know exactly. everyday people who want something that relates to and which is and back to what you were saying about also how supportive the uh, americans um a lot of americans where you know you were saying that early on yeah i think that yeah, but, it, uh, what is interesting is that when when you do to the traditional tattoo styles they are vernacular they are local to america for the most part so yeah yeah so you have in as long as you are in america you have these two levels you have the fact that it is tattooing you know as a globalized culture but it also is very specifically american to to a large extent um which yeah. is something that you find maybe to a slightly lesser level but still we find in england a lot and mm. then you would find probably in japan with japanese tattooing or like traditional japanese but in a lot of other countries if you do even the most beautiful you know more traditional style tattoo japanese american whatever then it's not the, it's not relevant to the local culture it's relevant to globalized tattoo culture and uh yeah. and i find that very interesting because that's the process i went through and it's very interesting to see you go through that um with, with uh with french with more specifically french so where do you think how far do you think this can go because what i find interesting as well is when i see the kind of work that is being done in france today and i have mm. to say i think that the french scene has become for me one of the most interesting lately i think that there's been a, a huge you know uh outburst of creativity and amazing artists in france i have to say like i really you know it's not a secret to say that france has been a bit you know but a bit behind for a couple of decades at least when it comes to tattooing but still, still is still is yeah but i think that they're definitely in paris i mean <laughs> mostly because i'm more i see paris more than, but but even the yeah. people from from uh, bhb tattoo and and all like amazing yeah. people in, in lyon and, and all over i i love the french tattoo scene right now and i think that there's going yeah. to be some very interesting things happening there so how do you see your work in particular like do you have any idea how you would like it to evolve uh in relation to that to friends in relation to friends yeah or in general how do you like to see evolve you and make your style evolve i mean just the way i mean i don't know maybe you know but i've been tattooing for like three four years you know so so my career, my career is That's really... how long I've known you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you start knowing me. Actually, you know me when I model for yeah. Tumblr. You which, know what? Which before, I'm... before you, <laughs> before you, you, you came in today, I was just introducing you. And that's what I said. I was like, actually, I was like, oh, I knew, I knew you from like, blah, blah. And then I was like, no, I knew, I knew him from modeling for yeah. the for the song blue video and and, and all that yeah which is pretty funny you know like since since this day i think like first of all thank you so much and i know if, yeah, I know, of course i told you thank you but like you definitely you definitely in two ways in two ways you definitely helped my career in two ways you know you or the song blue um uh, notoriety or whatever you created about but it's about you at the end it's you had me as a tattooer because you took me as a model, not knowing I was tattooing, met your sister, I was a photographer at the time. Um, 
And then after that, you invited me to tattoo with, with Ruby for the launch of the second magazine. Mm -hmm. Then you look at my flash and you were like, oh, do you know this page, French Prison Tattoos? And I'm like, yeah, I'm running it, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, like, and that's really funny because you, you didn't want to help me because of what I was doing. You just, you, you took me, you took me in 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 your under your wing, you know, because I don't know what well, my work was been maybe good at the time, but then you realized I was the guy doing French prison thing, and I can be really grateful from from your help because it was just like you helping French prison tattoo to become what it is without knowing that it was me. Then you had me to tattoo with Ruby, which was a fucking mentor and she still is, and you know the all connections made to like oh you should come to. You should come to Sombre London and do a guest. And I message you be like, I'm coming to I'm going to Zurich in two weeks. You know? You remember that? Yeah, yeah, and you were like, hey, you should come guest in Sombre. And I was like, I'm going to guest in Sombre, bro. What are you talking about? You know? So um, yeah, that was really funny. And I feel like this is this is my evolution. My evolution is is whatever I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna do the best. I'm gonna try to do the best, you know, like and then you catch me in two different ways, you know, like which is which is people can catch me now, they catch me for the brand I'm studying, you know, they're gonna... My evolution is not just tattooing and it will never be just tattooing because I started it, you know, and people that get to the, by me now catch me sometimes because I was skateboarding professionally before, you know? So like, I think my evolution will never be just one thing. It will always yeah. be me trying to be me and I don't try to be anyone else. I just follow what I love and follow what's surrounding me and at the moment I'm really trying to surround myself with people that push me up you know and there's so many like energy vampires and yeah I feel like I feel like in London this is why I've, I'm traveling so much at the time at the moment because London is a city that is good for everyone but if you stay for too long you're gonna be sucked energy in, in, energy wise you know like yeah and I feel like I mean, traveling I mean, uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, the 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 lag and the connection is a bit frustrating. But um, with London, what I realize is that there's there's only two kinds of people. There's the people who were born in London, like you know, like my you know my dear friend Liam or whatever. Like those people are are specially made for London. And then there's anyone else. If you're not Born and raised in London. No, I don't agree. I don't agree. There's three. There's three types. Okay. Three okay. Types what's the third one? Which is which is the three types of people in general? Is three types uh -huh. of people? Is the people that are leaders to to to, to, to reproduce as 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 best as I can, and it's the third type, the followers, the followers that that will follow anything you show them. You know, they will they will just follow it. And I think there's a three type of people, and in London is the people that really can f create we could, because London is such a, 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 cr a crazy place of like uh, all right um, I'm gonna finish that and I'm gonna go pick up it quickly for like a minute and the, the third type is is yeah the people that follow can I stop that and then go quickly yeah 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 go on can you, go on. Can you entertain the people for five minutes yeah yeah if, on, we lose, if we lose viewers if you lose viewers it's your fault <laughs> go ahead I know it's um, okay, so I'm going to read the comments and address, like, if there's anything uh, interesting. Um, so shout out to Amuse. I hope you're well. Just going from the from the bottom. Thank you for everyone who's tuned in. Probably a lot of people already uh, tuned out. Um, how do you believe that tattoos can enhance people's psychological well-being? That's a really good question, actually. I'm just going to, like... I mean, so uh, obviously a little bit out of the, the current conversation, but I don't think that, I think that, that actual well-being, psychological well-being is, is not something that something external can help, that one thing can help, but external things such as tattooing can be a sort of a stepping stone or a component in in a in a in a recipe or in a in a general sort of 
two bucks. It, it's, it's like, you know, it's like tattooing. Yeah, maybe that's the comparison. Like, it's a tool, and then uh, and then once you have the tool, then you need to to, to use it. Uh, hey, welcome back. I'm just going to finish finish what I'm saying. I'm like I'm 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 trying to 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 re respond to the almost the last comment. Um, um, if, yeah. tattoos can, if tattoos can help with psychological well being, I think I think you can in the sense that tattooing, just like other things, are tools that can help you adjust your relation to the environment because you're altering the way you look because you're altering some things but it can also do the opposite so it's not you know it's not a, a secret formula it's a tool and with a hammer you can break stuff or you can build you know <laughs> houses and you can uh, do amazing things so um so I think I think you have to to look at tattoos just like as a tool with many many others from like you know just go learn you know do impro uh you know impro courses or whatever like things anything that can make you feel that you're closer to to how you you are how you perceive yourself anything that that helps you express your identity um, can be be used as a you know for your your well being and psychological well being, but it's important to not rely only on things like this because because it's an, because it can be an illusion and it can be something that that you get caught up in etc. Anyway, um, back to the conversation. Uh, <clears throat> You, we were talking about yeah i just wanted to also say real quick for for uh, you know uh, I, I just i just wanted to say real quick and i appreciate you know i'm i'm, I'm really all i all i want is to you know help people it's the best thing for me to hear that you know i've helped that, people in, in that, which, is, which is the questions i have for you like i mean i'm gonna let you finish yeah um but, and i want to say as well like yeah like there's many ways i meet a ton of people with the time and and you know I, I connected you know you know you had there was something you know in 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 the way you looked and how you came across your your drawings were cool etc but i think i think that quickly when i realized that you were doing all those things beyond purely tattooing then there's there's also something that is that is a bit special for me in the sense that you know i i have the utmost respect for my you know my friends amazing artists who just do one thing etc i never i this is not you know i'm add i'm a bit you know like intense like that and um and and also there's something personal where i connect with that sort of way of like looking you know looking at the wider picture and bring everything sort of build you know you know build your your world your your artistic career uh, you know, on on many different levels and sort of progressively, uh, you it know. Can't be good. It can't be good. If you can't be the best at one, try to be at least really good at everything. Exactly. You know? That's, that bring that's good about. Yeah, that is exactly how I've always done it. Because um, and 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 so I think that they definitely also early on I, I also sort of connected with that part of of how you do things and and your personality. Um, so I think, um, yeah, so anyway. For sure. I have a question for you because yeah, I'm yeah. like, I don't know I, the, the words and I'm really sorry about it. No, no, go on. I've been enjoying my time so much in Zurich that I didn't have time to watch any of the fucking live you've done already, <laughs> which is pretty bad. I connected for 10 minutes for the, for the, for the, for the Ruby one right, last yeah. time and it only was two hours, which I didn't even know about. Um, and, um, I feel like. You know, it's, it's, it's a live video it's between two people, you know? So mm -hmm. you have a lot of questions, but I feel like people need to know about you too, you know? And, and you know, even if we work together, we don't actually really uh, spend time like we do now together. And then I have a lot of questions like, like, for example, like, you're really busy. You clearly, you have a lot of things in your hands. And the most remarkable things for me that I, that I really respect you the most out of all your skills is to be a great dad 
a great dad because you really put your children and wife and family on the line on, on social media. So you really connected to them. But at the same time, you have so many companies and things that you take care of. So my question would be, my question would be, how, how do you keep up with all these things? How do you keep up, you know, like spending time with the family and at the same time taking care of three studios plus a publishing company and like, not what's your, what's your trick, but I know, I clearly, I know what I'm doing is I enjoy every minute of everything I do, but you clearly you have more things. So like question, it would be like a, a general global question is how, for the viewers, you know, how do you, how do you take care of the audience at the same time? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to try and answer because I've been, I've been trying to answer it for myself for a long time, forever. And that's, that's just, but I would say that the best answer I can give is that to me, all of those things are not different. They're all part of one thing, which is an extension of, of my of my vision. And what yeah. happens is that, you know, if you you're gonna do a tattoo, you're gonna do something else, whatever. Like if you if you were not, not yourself, but like someone's gonna perform one task. Actually, any task is broken down in a sequence or a certain amount of things that will happen either in parallel or in sequence one after the other, you know, if you're cooking or whatever, just think that, but on a much bigger scale. But at the end of the day- smaller. I had it smaller for me because like, how can you put it in one day? There's 24 hours, you need sleep. You need sleep in these 24 hours, you need sleep. But you seems to be like, every hour is counted in your schedule to be like, okay, one kid, you have three kids. Maybe not all of the viewers know this, but you have three kids. So, you know, like you can't take care of the three kids at the same time. It's impossible. So you have to take care of each education because of different age, even if you have twins, but still different age. And you have a wife and you need to keep your wife happy. Everyone knows they need to keep your wife happy. Plus, all the rest on the side. Like, you know, you can put that on a schedule, but it seems for me like what you're doing, and I really want to say, you like it's impressive and and you're an example like for me it's like you're an example in in, in sort of like being able because i've i say to my girlfriend and a lot of my family or friends i'm like i'm trying first to focus on my on my career you know to because i will need i need the, the free time that i have right now we have nothing kids not having kids and not having you know i mean i have a girlfriend that i love the most but i still it, it's easy because she's, she's really part of my life of professional life but you know, like you but really, you need... you really seems to care about everyone. And even on my, on my birthday, I don't even know because I never told you my birthday. You message me privately, you know, which is insane. Like you know, like you you have uh, this this maybe it's your talent, maybe it's your 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 secret weapon, whatever. But you seem to really being able to take care of every little details so well, super well, and then yeah. You know, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You, have, you have to think as well. So I want to also take the opportunity. You know, it's, it's, there's a few things that are very important for me to say here. Like, first of all, uh, I need to, you know, it, it's because of how things have been built up. I, you know, I am to some extent the face or like uh, of certain things that I do, etc. But that's just because, you know, of historically how, but if you take the, the volume, the quantity of things that need to be performed for everything to work, I don't, I don't do all of this. Like, as you said, we all have 24 hours in our days. Um, I use my time extremely efficiently. Yes. And, and I'm extremely structured, but, extremely efficient. but <laughs> efficiently. You it, like. but, but nonetheless i have to say like yeah there is hundreds like there's you know if you take my day you take all the people who work with me on those projects including yourself you know i don't do this like we all collectively doing it 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm merely, uh, you know, a conductor in, a, in an orchestra. But at this point, I'm not even performing the instruments myself or like for the most part. Or <laughs> fucking sticks and you're like, this is what's happening, guys. And exactly. No happening. And be like, okay, now, you know, now this and now that, you know, or a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. But occasionally I'll take, you know, the cello to be like, oh, it must sound a bit more like this. Or, you know, the percussions, oh, do you know, try to do the beat like this or whatever, like hit a bit harder there. But, but there's still a lot of people. So I have to say, like, without, yeah. you know, without the amazing people in the teams, without, uh, you know, the, the partners, without uh, Manuela, who was in the comments a bit earlier, you know, in L.A., without um, Dave and Lloyd in, in Zurich, without... Uh, uh, Danny in London without, uh, you know, even my older partners like... Uh, Diego in, LA. in LA. Diego and Solo in LA. Don't forget what, what, what? Diego and Solo in LA. Well, yeah, no, of course. I think, yeah. I think it, it's very important to say that, you know, that there is one thing that I've done, and, and this is something where it's important as well, and it ties in a bit with the conversation of like diversifying and how we do things in the tattoo world. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what, what I set up is at the end of the day, inspired by just what is normal, what is doing business, but not business in the sense like of financial, like, uh, you know, of doing business to make money, but what is to construct a, a, a business project what being an entrepreneur is about that you learn that some people learn in schools and just go out and like start some random you know little companies just to make some money or whatever I didn't do that I, I started with the things that I loved but then I realized that if I wanted to make it grow to the point where I wanted to be I yeah. had to, to, to teach myself a certain amount of things um, to, to, to be able to then create a structure that can support. Because in the, in the tattoo world, there's such a, a, you know, in French you say, un culte de la personnalité. You know, there's such, there's that idea that you have the artist and there's almost nothing else. Even the studios are kind of in the background, etc. cetera. Um, mm. and, and so this is also very specific to arts. This is very specific to, to, to the, you know, in, in the art, in arts, there's that idea of the artist and everything's, which is it, for the most part, completely hypocritical. Because if you take, you know, musicians, if you take even visual artists, they have a ton of people, you know, but the gallerists, the, you know, they're often in the background, you know, and anyway, there's a bit of a, of a mystique around that, that idea, but really in the tattoo world, it's, it's pretty much true. There's, there's, Pretty much, you know, the artists do everything. And I just mm. try to step out of this thing. I was okay uh, with stepping out of that sort of format slightly, which, yeah. uh, but, but at the end of the day, I didn't, I didn't reinvent the wheel or whatever, like I, or, or I did actually, I did just reinvent the wheel because I just applied things that exist in any other kind of field of, entrepreneurship would you, would you and say you have something you have, would you say you have something more special than some people i mean i would know you have it but would you would, could you could you say it or like could you do you realize there's something more special in a way that you can really take care of everything with a logical way not only money but yes logical way of your of your family because i friends. have a plan because i have and i always had a plan or not always but that is also one thing. I started tattooing in my late twenties, so I when, I when wanted. Did you start? To, sorry, when did you start? What how old were you? Uh, I apprenticed between twenty seven and twenty nine, and I started officially like in my That's when I was twenty nine, thirty years old, twenty eight. You know, and you started when I was when I am now. Exactly. Exactly, and and so what I'm saying is like also. If I had children, you know, the, the fact that I can do now and that I'm, I'm really sort of disciplined about keeping that time and that structure for my family is also because I can afford it. But then all of that extra work, I did it before. 
And I always perceived things not just at a given moment, but over, you know, 10, 20 years. Um, and, and there's a lot of things when I was in my early 20s or whatever, I sort of always knew there were stages and I had to go th through certain stages and establish certain things to be able to yeah. get to the next stage. Um, and, and I really always considered that sort of long sequence of things. And, and that helped me a lot. And, and that even I still apply that during my days. That's how I, I, I kind of do things. Um, and, and again, like I want to say, you know, now I'm, I'm lucky to have this sort of people, you know, I just, I just like, I would say, you know, at the end of the day, um, I feed off that energy that I feel in the studios, that I feel like when things click. And, um, and, I, and I have to say, this is also where probably my limitations are, is that I, I don't, I can't be happy if I'm not personally connected to the things I do. So I, I, I want to be, you know, I, it, you know, it's again, like the conductor in, a, in, a, in, a, in an orchestra, you still need to be right there present. And yeah, this is you something need to be that I, yeah, Exactly. Like, I don't, I don't think I'll end up being like in a little ivory tower somewhere or whatever. And, and I'm aware of that as well, which is one of the reasons why, you know, I don't want to have a, a fairly clear picture of where the things finish or like a point beyond which I don't necessarily want to grow or like certain things I don't want to do in terms of growing, you know, the tattoo thing, because there's a point where yeah, I would feel alienated. Uh, and, and the tattooing is not something that I want to feel alienated from. So I think it, it's, so maybe to try and answer your question, I think that I did that work of introspection and trying to understand both how ambitious I am, but also what my limitations are. What's and, realistic, it's being realistic. It's like you can't have, exactly. some people have goals too far. It's, exactly. For my, for my personal opinion is, is I've been trying to have small goals all the time. I've been trying to, let's say, because it's, it's, it's a short amount of time my career has been, been happening, and it's been like, I want an apprenticeship. No, I want to be, I want to draw. I want an apprenticeship. I want to to be better at tattooing. I want to travel. I want to spread a name. I don't want, I don't want my career to be like, I don't want Instagram to be off. Um... I wanted to really be out there and show people and learn from people, you know, like, so I wanted to set small goals. If I have an advice for people, it's like small goals is the best. Like don't go too far. Don't, don't dream to be a millionaire. Dream to, to the small, the thing, what's the thing that's in front of you and you think you can reach it, try to reach it, you know, like yeah. I don't try yeah. to reach too far and you need it, I guess, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. And what happens is like life is long, you know. I feel that one thing that I had is that when I when I was a kid, you know, young kid, there were you know a lot of things that you know I felt were not right about the the life you know that I that I lived, and there were a lot of things. And then when I reached even my early teens, like when I reached twelve, fourteen years old, I already felt that. I had lived so much because I had, you know, I remember from a very young age being like, no, it's going to pass. And then yeah. looking back and be like, at the time I wasn't happy and now I'm, I'm happy and try to, and try to understand how I got from one to the other, but also yeah. try to feel that time and the amount of things that can be done in time. And there's another thing as well. Like it's not a realization, but the thing I was, so the other day, literally but the, you know a, a month ago before confinement i was walking down uh to the train station to go to the tattoo studio and i was yeah. listening to i don't know i was listening to drake or some things you know and <laughs> someone talking about you know like being a multi-millionaire and be like you know living in a huge mansion and yeah and then you know of course there's like something amazing about that and you know you're dreaming and and yeah. I caught myself being like, ah, oh, you know, it'd be amazing to be 
to be a millionaire, like to live in, yeah. in, in, in Drake's, you know, amazing house or whatever. And then, you know, all of a sudden I was like, why am I saying this? You know, I was, I was just <laughs> walking. It's in your head, you have everyone, it says in your head. Yeah, and I was just walking to the, the train and yeah, like, of course, I'm not in a, in a Rolls Royce being driven by someone, but I was like, I, I, I actually asked myself, I was like, is there any single thing, a single thing right now that I would change if I could? Is there, is there one interference in my happiness right now or tomorrow would... or in the foreseeable future? No, there is not a single interference in my happiness right yeah, now or in my future that, you know, it can be, of course, but, yeah. but and you know what? I felt, I was like... Yeah, yeah, like team. I don't need I don't need need anything else. But I didn't always have that. I worked you my work. ass off to get there, you but I also that. knew what I needed to be happy. And I looked, yeah. I, I looked inside of myself, and I was like, "What do I need? Uh, yeah. What What do that I was, want?" The thing, the thing that you need now is how can I be happier? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Like and, you, you felt like you felt like you. You never felt, actually, like, it isn't for me, like, I felt, I feel, I said to so many people, I'm happy. And I've never had this feeling, because when I was a kid, I was, a, I was, like, a child, whatever. People would take care of me, you know? And there's this moment of your life, when you, you're a kid, and then you, boom, you're an adult. Then you, you, you go to a certain routine, a type of life, then you're like, okay, I'm working. And you surround people in the same environment, you know? And you can see people being complaining, being really not like you know satisfied by what i have but then like suddenly tattling came to my life and it changed something in my life because it was like you know i'm 28 i think three years that you know i really 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 went not happy and in, we were in a situation of trying to get happiness you know again going out or you know taking like substances whatever to make you feel this short moment of happiness but then once you realize when this is over and you're not happy then you that you don't even think that you're not happy because you don't want to tell that to yourself but once you like i feel like i'm not happy and i want to say i don't want to pride about it whatever but when you feel like you're happy you know like fortunately like me and you when you're happy and you know and you're like it feels it feels insane to think like i'm happy right now i was stuck in season and Stuck in Switzerland, but the thing is that I'm unhappy, and then I turned the situation to be stuck in Switzerland to a way that I found myself. I, I made myself happy to be stuck somewhere, and then it yeah. made everything amazing, you know. And and that's what I want to say to a lot of people it's like you don't know you're not happy, but once you feel this happiness, the only thing that you can reach more is is little goals, but like you can only make yourself a little bit happier, but it doesn't matter if you try hard or not, is that you're happy right now, enjoy it, and try to keep it like that. See yes. maybe in the future, but try to keep it and then really enjoy the moment because, and try to keep this moment happening. Don't fuck it up. Please don't fuck it up. Just make it, make it like you've worked for it. Keep it like that, you know? Yeah. But, but there is, the, the and, and there is, there is another thing about, about this, which is, you know, that that I, f I find you know really interesting what you what you're saying right now because what is amazing about life is that happiness now happiness today is not the same as happiness in ten years you know yeah. you're, you're you're 28 it it might not be you know that obvious to you yet but once you reach your 40s you start realizing that the definition of happiness. You can continue to be happy, but what will make you happy at one point or another will be very yeah. different. And there's some things that made you happy at some point will not be making you happy later. And I have, I have to say as well, like in my early sort of early thirties, when I started, you know, I met my amazing wife and, 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 you know, we started considering uh, having children and, and I always wanted to have kids. But the thing is, I was like, what? Shout out to What'd the wife. <laughs> yeah. Say shout um, out to the wife. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but um, uh, one thing as well is that I realized I was in my, I never wanted to be, for me, I'll tell you that one thing. I always had one image that kept me focused as well, which is don't be the old dude in the club. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, bro, you know I had I mean? the same thing with skateboarding. Like, in skateboarding, the same thing. I was like, when I was back in the key, like at a skate park, and this old dude being like, oh yeah, we get 20, key, 20 tricks. Like, you know, you cool, but back in the days, I was like skating, I was skateboarding. But like those, back, those dudes, they were so pathetic that, that actually, in a way, they helped me because I don't want to be this old dude at the skate park anymore. Exactly. You know? You know? It's, yeah, that, that 100%. Was, yeah. I want to be the young dad, like the cool dad in the, in yeah. the playground. Like, exactly. 100%. Like, I'll, I'll, to bring I'll my kids in, to like... Park. I want to bring my kids to the skate park. Yeah. My kids reading. And I, and I just leave. And I leave. And, I, and then exactly. my next generation, my next generation... Yeah. In the future, you know, like, this is it. Like, yeah, you know, I've, you know I've, I've, I've done it, man. Like, if you need me to do a, a, a trick on a skateboard, I still can. Oh, 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 be careful. I've been, we've been nominated for push-ups. I've been nominated before, so if I want to... Oh, I yeah, man. Do Oli. Can you do Oli? Man, I can be a Switch 360 flip. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I skated for 30 years, man. 25 <laughs> years, seriously. <laughs> you... Yeah, you can do a switch tray. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I used to at least. I could do uh, a hard flip. Oh. I can do a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I used to at least. Yeah, um, I used to. Yeah, man. I could do, dude. I could do like I'm, I'm, I'm old school, man. I could do like I, I started skating in the late in the late eighties, so um, I can do like. You you're know, the age of Tony Hawk kind of shit. You know that. So. The age of Tony or something. How old are you? Like forty? No, he's he. I'm I'm forty one. He's he's a bit older, like he's like uh, forty six or something. Um, but um, uh, yeah, yeah, like so I can do <laughs> you know. I used to do impossible like boneless fucking you know all that all that shit or like the the power parata yeah. like stuff. <laughs> I grew up with these things, but um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, but also, I have, another, have, another, have another question for you. Yeah, man. Yeah, I have another question for you. It's like, it's in, it, it pretty much is the same question you asked me about. Um, I mean, you don't ask me that, but it's the way that you, you, you clearly you've been involving in, in tattooing. You know, you, you can do, I saw you, I saw you have some held back piece from you that were like, you know, the traditional Japanese. Um, and I can see what you're doing now. And even your drawings, that's like blast of of like, um, hatching and like you know engraving kind of stuff it's like do you see now after your your your, your career your years of tattooing do you see yourself still evolving would you would you ever change your style one now from what you're doing now you know because it's, it's quite interesting to see someone like you would you think at some point it's possible like you to to i don't know to be bored of tattooing and maybe not just go into business but maybe just you know like tattoo something that I don't know you you like to do that it's a good question but the 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 answer is yes of course but what can make it possible is that you need to shift at some point from needing to tattoo to work i mean there's a few things that you need to set up to be able to do that once yeah. you need to free space you need to free up space to be able to do some shifting and knowing yeah. that, you know, knowing that it will, it's like, it's like when a musician changes their style, like all of a sudden and people are like, what the fuck is that? And Never then works. you know what, maybe it's really good. And maybe, you know, like all of a sudden, you know, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, I, I don't know, like in the early 2000s when Madonna came back with some weird like production from a French guy and, and all of a sudden it was like that weird sort of French, you know, uh, uh, French housey kind of thing or, or, or whatever, like sometimes yeah. it can flop and sometimes it can be right, mm -hmm. but whatever happens, so you need to be ready to face the, 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 the sort of natural uh, kickback of you know, that you're following or whatever. But then you really need to know, I, I feel that what, what I'm interested in is, you know, I need, there's two ways to, 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 
to tattoo once you've reached a certain point. And right now, I could just keep going and evolve just adjust because the the demand you know your your clients are going to evolve so you can always use that as an opportunity to go in one direction or another so you can work very yeah. organically that's, that's following trends. yeah it's not necessarily for following trends but it's it's using the opportunity and the input from someone and sort of you know navigate with the with the currents or whatever and for me, the market. sorry understanding the market exactly but what i'm maybe more interested to do is instead of staying afloat like instead of of <clears throat> you know if we take the comparison with sailing instead of having to go from one point to another by yeah. like using you know whatever like you know wherever the winds push you and having to play with the wings along the way yeah. i'm more interested in like in, in ducking for a while going on the land getting much closer to where I want to be like with some other means and then yeah. getting back in the thing. And so what yeah. that means as far as tattooing is concerned is that I am using the fact that I can do other stuff again. So I can make art, I can make, you know, do drawings, I can do yeah. media, like, you know, tattooism, I can do all of those things that for me, make me, make me understand where I might want to be as, as a tattoo artist. Um, yeah. And, and I don't necessarily want to just go all the way there following the winds also because it can, I can afford to, you know, I, I have some, you know, I can, I can afford to, to not go to work necessarily absolutely every day and things like that, which means that I can, I can take a moment to rethink how I approach things. And, you know, and it's a matter of time. Like, for example, last summer, I took almost two months completely off to work on some art. And, and for like yeah. six months, I was working like six days a week, almost five, six days a week, nonstop, because we, you know, moving and we needed, you know, some, some cash for, um, to pay for family stuff. Um, so, you know, there's there's times like that, but but for me, going through things that are not just tattooing alone and dealing with clients and blah blah, but going to to study, uh, you know, or work on some art, you know, go see contemporary art stuff, um, and and things that you know where I'm a completely different headspace, or um, just design fonts and work with a type foundry and things like this make me completely yeah. shift or even designing merch or whatever like all of a sudden i'm just yeah. i'm just trying things for a t-shirt and then nine times out of ten or maybe 99 times out of a hundred it's things that would never look good as a tattoo or whatever yeah. but like all of us it, it looked rad on a t-shirt but it would never look yeah. good as a tattoo but you know what all of a sudden there's that one thing and i'm like oh that's tattooable that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. how, do you know what I mean? But, but for that one thing that could be a cool tattoo, I need to spend five hours, 10 hours, 20 hours designing stuff for a t-shirt. If I'm tattooing every day, I don't have these hours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I no, need no. to make time for that. And luckily yeah. at this point, I, I can make time like this. So uh, yeah. Or even, you know, I, I worked, I designed the, the, the watches and worked with, with Hublot on, on, on things like this. To me, and that's also coming back to your question about how can I do all those things. Like for me, all of those things, I just like where I'm getting at now in my uh, creative process is that I have this kind of, you know, set of things I do all, all of the time. I, I do a bit of drawing I'm on my computer I'm playing around like designing you know magazines or designing merch or designing tattoos but but in a very literal way like I use illustrator for example uh the software I use illustrator for everything so yeah while I'm doing one design or one thing a sculpture or anything or whatever like all of a sudden I'll, I'll, something will pop up then I'm like oh that's a cool tattoo that's a cool t-shirt 
that's cool for, for this, that's cool for that, and I will separate it. So I have this continuous um, creative process, and then I have different outputs. I have these different places where I can use this or that, and then, um, and then all of a sudden, um, I, will, I will isolate an element that I have identified for one or another output. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, of course, absolutely. Like, it's about adapting yourself to like, it's about, at the end, it's, it's, it's really general, but it's about what you love, you know? It's about, it's easy to say, because sometimes I feel like people can say, oh, you, anyone can do anything or anything, but like, I feel like it's about, in, in the kind of industry that we are, it's about, and the way, as the moment that you kind of succeed or you feel like you're in the right path, it's about really following what you love and it's going to, in a way, yes. as long as you put your heart into it and then, you know, like it's going to work in a way. I feel like maybe it works for me and I don't know, I want to say it's, 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 it's what you have to do, but I feel like if you really follow yourself and you want to do good on this, it's going to work. Like in London, for example, really show me that like you can do what the fuck you want. You can do whatever you want in London is a city that will provide income to you if you do it well. Like, you know, yes. I, I, came, I, came, I came to learn just to travel. I came to learn to, to stay for like a month and that's been eight years, you know? So I feel <laughs> like, I feel like if you just, like if I decide to do sushi now, really good sushi, I am decided to do really sushi, really good sushi. I don't even like sushi, you know? But if I want to do sushi now and I do really well, I will make money out of it. I will yes. have a good life of it. because if I love it, if I do it really well, you know, it will work. And it's really interesting because I'm reading this, I'm reading this book actually. I don't know if you read about it. Like this, this rich dad, poor dad. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I I know about it. Yeah. He's it, a funny guy. He's like he's a weird, uh, like he's Hawaiian origin. I think he's Japanese Hawaiian guy from uh, from where from Hawaii, but more more of all like, American. And he really tried to explain to people how to invest their money, how to to make money. You know, and he tells him, he tells you and everyone like. Is is experiences are like, you know, um, real estate, uh, investing in small companies and like small stocks, whatever. But at the end, you always break this, and it's like, invest in what you love. Yes, because and you can't, like, because you you cannot lose if you, you if if you if you do what you love. But I would say, and sadly, I also have to say, I'm gonna go have to have to go to bed. Uh, soon because the kids wait, get up early but um uh, <laughs> yeah. what is it what is crucial you need to go for what you love but you need to understand what you love and it's 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 easier said than done you need to really know yourself or learn yourself learn to know yourself get to know yourself and get to know what you love what makes you happy that you know the happy that thing about happiness it's a big word but at the end of the day that's what it's about you know and and but the thing is is that how how do you know like i sure like i know I'm not gonna like I'm I'm as materialistic as the next guy. Like I have to say, I for me getting to the point where you know I grew up in Switzerland. I didn't. I, I grew up in a middle class, possibly lower middle class uh, uh, environment by Swiss standards. But I realized when I left Switzerland that even if you grow up in a fairly you know average uh, uh, kind of, you know, wealth uh, family, what you have, you know, the quality of life, education, the quality of food, the, the how the house are built, things like this, you know, it's luxury. And it's something that you get in Switzerland because it's a rich country. When you leave Switzerland, you don't get that kind of level. But I, I was like, you know what? I for whatever reason but the thing is is that i want to be able to be in a in a decent house i want to be able to afford decent food and how am i going to get that well i need to make a certain amount of money to be able to get to that and so yeah there's a point where 
it was it was an actual business plan in, on a personal level. I was like, okay, how much money do I need to earn in a month to be able to not to to go to place to get the cheese that I like? I don't want you know. I don't need a fifteen room mansion. You know, I don't need like, I don't need that. But I do need to be able to spend fifteen pounds on a bit of cheese if I feel like it. And yes, it's yeah. a luxury. It's a it's yeah. a huge luxury, and I am incredibly thankful for being able to afford that. And a lot of yeah. people can't. But but that was a drive for me, and that was yeah. one of a, a driving among others. And then obviously, you know more like personal artistic narcissistic aspects of like you know you know succeeding or getting to some level in in the arts is, is one thing or expressing myself or whatever was very important but also knew yeah. that i wanted to get to a point where i can afford that expensive cheese and so yeah. um so but i looked in myself and i was like okay this is, you know, and back to my, back to what I was saying about, you know, my, my walk to the, the train. I was like, I don't need a Rolls Royce. I don't need a chauffeur. I love walking through the park every day. I love walking. Yeah. Do you know what? I don't, but I do need my cheese. Oh, I do need, <laughs> you know, I, I, I do that's need. That's a no, that's a no. <laughs> you know, I do need whatever else, you know, of certain things like that. And so by reminding by by knowing myself and reminding myself of of that it is something that helps me to know what to work towards like i don't own a house you know this is the the next my next goal like i just want, i don't need 50 rooms but i grew up you know i want a house that that my kids can grow up in and be like that's our house that's the house we grew yeah. up in and um mm. And, and and I love that idea, and I never felt I needed that until recently. But I, and I might not need like fifty, you know, or more like pairs of trainers now. But I do need a house, <laughs> and so I think that you know, being being okay, even as an artist, because they I I found out, or at least the way I grew up, there was a bit of a stigma, you yeah. know, in in Europe, in the, my environment. There was always a bit that, that that stigma like, oh, you're an artist, blah, blah, like the idea of being a sellout and the idea of, of you know, do, do, you shouldn't be thinking about money. You shouldn't be thinking about those things. And I have to say that first it was, you know, hip hop that kind of helped me understand that you can be, you know, incredibly creative and still be, you know, uh, uh, you know, working hard and, and also focusing on, on the business side of things. And uh -huh. then... But then tattooing, even, you know, as a tattooist, you have to be like, you know, you, you're the person who makes the money as well. No one's going out to sell your stuff. You have to be able to sell yourself. And I think this was really pivotal for me because there's no other way because that, that is how you do as a tattoo artist. And, uh, yeah. and, 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 you know, there's no two ways around it. There's not even, not even, and there's no taboo around, you know, making, just earning a living. It's like a craft in that sense. Um, and yeah. that, that helped me a lot, but I think, and yeah, anyway, um, but back to the idea of working for what you love, I think, um, being, Autumn. yeah, be, not, being honest with yourself and not, you know, not giving, not accepting. I think that's one thing that's very difficult for, for people in, in creative and artistic fields, like being okay with the fact that material life is a thing and that, you need to fucking like, you know, when you're 20 or 30, you can live like Colin and be like, oh, I eat just, you know, mac and cheese every day. And like, I have crazy, you know, skin yeah, problems because of <laughs> yeah. what I eat. Oh, like, for Colin, like, no, you don't want to live but, like Colin. That's a great, like, you don't want to live like Colin at 30 years. No, like, you, even, <laughs> but even Colin one day, he will need that good cheese. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, even he, will. even he, he will, appreciate, he he'll be, the cheese, <laughs> no, he, but he, he will. Like, it. there's a point where, you know, where your buddy tells you, dude, you need to get your shit together and eat like, you know, eat correctly. So anyway, 
Um, yeah, like uh, that. That's that's my conclusion. <laughs> Shout out, Colin. Colin, if you're here, we love you anyway. Don't yeah, he he we, just commented. One day you understand. You know? <laughs> yeah, we we love you, Colin, but we we care about you, you know, and we slightly concerned about your health. So I'm looking forward to being. Um, do you know what, Colin? Check this out. Today I thought that um if this tattoo thing doesn't work out for you too much um <laughs> when i move to la i'll actually pay you to cook food while i work you can actually cook food for both of us i will give you a decent salary mate <laughs> you don't want what he's cooking you don't want what he's cooking no I won't. I'll, 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 I'll show him <laughs> You, t you spend some time just to teach you how to cook for you, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. That's an investment. That's an investment. Exactly. For you and him. <laughs> for you and him. <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway. Gonna, that was I'm great. Gonna, yeah, that was fun, man. Thank you for, thank you for two hours of great conversation. Um, yeah. Enjoy Switzerland. Uh, I'll talk to you anyway. Yeah. But um, good. And keep me updated when I come back to work, eh? In London. Yeah, of course. But yeah, good to see you, man. Sure. All right. See you later. Take care. Bye, bro. Bye-bye. <laughs>